Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be showing you a repair video of repairing your SMA port and uh, how to go about doing it and what I like to do with the Asian TX526 VTX is here. Now this happens to me on almost every VTX. I usually tend to break the SMA port. However, it's not the end of your VTX at all. So first things first, what you want is you're going to need uh, the correct SMA port that you would like to install here. I'll leave a link to those down below. However, what we're going to do is we're going to make it a static antenna. And the way we're going to do this is that this VTX comes with this antenna here. It's a 5.8 gigahertz antenna. This won't work with everything. Some things are 2.4 gigahertz and that does uh, matter because of the way the wave travels through the air. So first thing we want to do is remove some of the heat shrink. Now, personally, I do not like removing all of the heat shrink. That's my opinion, but you know, it just depends on how you want to go about doing it. And I, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. So right now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and remove some of this heat shrink. Um, I can't find a blade right now. So that's why I am doing it this way currently. So let's just go ahead and remove some of this. Be careful when removing it, just so you don't ruin anything. Cause you can easily hit a component and just completely ruin it. So just be very careful and you want to kind of get the heat shrink away from the area you're going to be soldering because you don't want it to melt inside the same area. So let's talk about some of the components I'm going to be using. So obviously the Asian TX526 for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the TS100 portable soldering iron. Uh, I've just been using this a lot lately and it's really reliable. I have been just constantly, constantly using it. So first things first, we want to clean up some of uh, the solder here and some of the connections. Usually it has, it's just soldered to one side and it's not really soldered to both sides. So it makes things a little bit easier. So right now we want to get rid of this one. And we just did, as you can tell right there, uh, it's right there, that little middle antenna piece right there. And uh, we want to make sure nothing is bridged. And now, as you can tell, we want to get rid of this one. So if you do have one side that's still connected, like to the overall SMA port, what you want to do is um, you want to go ahead and um, basically cut it. So if you had maybe, let's just say two pieces broken, just go ahead and grab some kind of a plier, well, not even a plier, some kind of a cutter and just pop that thing off. And now we have a clean, ready made VTX to prepare. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add solder on this side. That's the way that I like to do it. So let's go ahead and do it here. Now, some things you need to take note of here. You want these to be bridged together and you want these to be bridged together and um, you don't want them to bridge with anything else. So just be very careful. So start from the outside, add some solder and then we'll move in slowly right after. There we go. So you want to put enough solder, but not too much. Still here, just release the bridge right there. So there's a hole on this. Previous ones never had holes. That's fine. As long as one side is bridged, that's totally fine. And uh, you see why we kept the heat shrink? It's perfect. So just let that dry out for a little bit. So I'm making mistakes as I go. And usually it's a lot more simpler than this. All right. So we have just one side bridge. That's fine. It's going to be going to ground anyway. It's going to the shield. This is the shielding. This is what protects it from electromagnetic interference and which is important actually. So let's go ahead and grab the antenna now. Now the antenna is pretty important here. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, there's a little point right here. There it is. It's right there. What you want to do is kind of just bend it over and then you get this here. And the next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and cut that out right there. So there we go. Now we have an antenna. So the way this works is on the outside, we have shielding also that would be connected to the ground on the outer part. And in the middle, there'll be this little plastic thing that you'll have to strip a little bit away from it to connect it to the middle part in there. So let me go ahead and show you this. So let's go ahead and grab the cutter right here. And uh, you want to just take off. It's not too much. And there we go. Be very careful with this. So as you can tell here, so let's just see if we can zoom out here. You have these little hairs. And what you want to do is you don't want to remove those. You want to start moving those away and then it'll reveal this little plastic thing right in the middle 
So what I like to do is I like to kind of get it on both sides. And be careful with these hairs. You don't want them to touch the inner part. And I'll, and I'll show you what I mean in a little bit. So what I like to do is I like to do this here. Kind of like a little angel or something. That's the way it always looks like to me. So can you see what I've done there? That's what that's the way I go at doing this one. And now we have to be very careful because sometimes if you are not if you're just pinching that plastic piece in the middle, you can actually pull the antenna through. So and you don't want that. So what you want to do is you want to just bite just a small bit with your cutter. And this takes a lot of practice actually. And then there we go. Move out a little bit. So we have some of it is exposed. Hopefully you can see that. Some of it's exposed here. And I wish I could get a little bit more exposed. There we go. It's pretty difficult to get done. Okay. So one thing that's important, you don't want the outer wires to touch that middle one in there. And what I like to do first is I like to go ahead and solder the middle part first. But first I'm going to try to twist it and then add a little bit of solder to it. And the way that I go about doing it is I grab my solder, have it just stick out a little bit, get my soldering iron, make sure the tip is clean and just go ahead and hit the, the top part right there. So we don't get any loose strands to go out anywhere. All right, so now it's gonna go ahead and look like this. So next step is to grab our transmitter or VTX, sorry. And we're gonna go ahead and solder that right in the middle right there. So let's zoom in a little. I'm gonna use something heavy to hold that in place. And as you can tell, I've aligned it and I just wanna go ahead and just touch that in. There we go. So that's very nice inside. All right, so I've gone ahead and grabbed myself some tweezers. And now what I like to do is just slightly grab this and make sure you have twisted them before. And um, yeah, forgot we need to add just a tiny bit of solder on them here. And actually we don't have to twist them depending on the size. These are gonna be actually just fine here. So let's just go ahead and start with this. So there we go. So right now I'm just adding solder to the little strands that were popping out. I still haven't really soldered it into place just yet. But now I just started soldering it into place. There we go. So that's in now. Same thing goes here. I'm going to start just adding solder to the outer shielding of the wire and then just push it in to the pad there. Okay. Well, now we're going to go ahead and take a look at it. And as you can see right there, it's uh, very nice, very nice inside. So this way we'll keep it from not bending the middle part because that's the weakest point right there. Now, if you could tell, there's still some places, some wire right there that does not have solder on it. And I'd highly recommend you add a little bit to that. That'll increase its overall strength into on this side as well. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. I'm gonna add something heavy. So it just keeps it very stable for us. There we go. You don't want to keep your solder too much because you don't want to melt that plastic thing and have these wires bridge the, the inner wire. So that side's done. Let's see this side here. Just a tiny bit. There we go. So now if we take a look at it, really nice and really really strong really strong i really do like that so that's how you fix the Eushin tx526 and that's the way i usually do it and that's the way i mod them after i break them because uh on my favorite quads this is what i do even though i don't get much range but i'm not really going in for the range the range is just fine for me and um the the overall longevity of this is a lot better and uh, I, I tend to do this all the time. And the way I do this, just be careful not to have anything touch here and add a little heat shrink to this right there and you'll be fine. And just try not to have anything touch this area. Uh, if you want, you could just, I don't know, use some kind of, not super glue, but uh, some kind of double-sided tape that I use. Uh, I use this clear dampening one. And when I go to stick it inside the frame, usually I stick this on the top plate. I would have the tape go all the way to out here so I don't risk this touching because if that bridges something in there, it could be very bad. So that's it. That's how you fix an Eugene TX526. Now I had a broken one. Now I have a beautifully working one without having to wait for an SMA port. 
and uh, I'll leave a link to the SMA ports down below. And uh, for example, uh, you can do this temporary fix until you receive your SMA ports, and then just this will be easily removed. Just hold your your your, your soldering iron, just push that off. Or if you want, just cut it off and then just just clean it off with your soldering iron, and you'll have a brand new. Uh, clean ESGN TX526 to fix and um, that's it guys. So that's all it was. It's very simple and um, This is gonna work perfect now. I don't have to worry about breaking it I'll just have it go through the hole like this and uh, I don't have to worry about anything about it So uh, the reason why I fix this right now is because I'm planning on putting it on the new build and uh, I didn't have any newer ones so I just thought I'd just make this quick video. So that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the content. Uh, this is kind of like a small introduction to our fix it videos and I'll leave this into the fix it playlist. And um, if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know and please consider joining my Patreon just a dollar or two a month. It'll go an absolute long way. And you can also use the affiliate links down below. There's greatly support the channel, keep the channel going. And that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Now we'll see you next time. See you guys. Take care.